What's up, BFM? This is Big Tone coming at you from Big Tone Productions Beats and Feasts. Today we're going to be doing another recipe. We're going to be doing a standing rib roast. Hey guys, and before we even get started, you know how I get down. Go ahead and like the video if you like it. Comment and subscribe to the video and share the video all you want, guys. And we're going to get started with this. I'm going to introduce you to my supporting cast and show you how I actually do it. Okay, guys? All right, guys. So to get started with the standing rib roast, it's a very simple recipe. There's a few things I got to let you know before I even get started. This rib roast is a 10-pound rib roast. It's a pretty big one here. And anytime you cook a standing rib roast, it's got to be out in it. You got to get a room temperature for at least six to eight hours, guys. So I've, this one's been sitting out for a long, long time. I've washed it off, cleaned it up a little bit. And it's a very simple recipe, but, but you definitely got to let it get room temperature, okay, guys? You can't put a cold rib roast into a hot oven. It's not going to cook evenly. But in any case, this is how I do mine. So I'm going to introduce you my supporting cast. So I've got about eight cloves of garlic here. And then I've got just regular salt. I don't use the Himalayan sea salt in this one. The reason being because it's a little bit expensive and you got to use a lot of salt on this. So, and the salt really has a hard time penetrating. So you got to, you got to over salt. And then I use just regular black pepper and then Lowry seasoned salt. And this con contraption here, or this concoction, is nothing more than butter. Inside of the butter, I've got basil. I've got um, salt, pepper, and that's really about it. Oh, I've got some parsley flakes in there as well. So this is for the spread that we're going to put on the, sta on the standing rib roast. But the first thing I do here, guys, is I'm going to turn this up on its end. And you can see this is a four rib. As you can see, one, two, three, four. So there's a couple ways that you can get this. You can get it without the bone, or you can get it with the bone. I choose with the bone. It, it has a lot more flavor. Um, and you can even have the butcher cut the bone off and then retie it up for you. But bone-in is much more flavorful. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is you guys saw me do this with my, my roast that I made, one of my first videos. Um, in the meat, not in the fat, not on this side where all the fat's at, but in the meat, we're going to simply insert some cloves of garlic. All right, so you just make some nice slits. Very simple. And I just stick the garlic in there. There it goes. All right. I'm going to put three in here. I'm going to put one right here, too. So just a little hiding place for the garlic to give it some flavor. I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. My butcher seems like he gave me an in cut here. I'm not very happy with that, but it's okay. It's still going to be great. Most of the in cuts, when you cook them, that's going to be the more more to the more dunner portion of the meat. So that's okay. So I'm gonna insert six of them here in, in the sides of the meat. All right, and then I am gonna put a couple here for two reasons. For one, to give it flavor, and two, is that slit is a place where salt can slip through and give it a little bit more flavoring, okay? I give it some more seasoning. So I got them strategically placed here around the salt cap. All right, guys, and before I even go any further, I forgot to tell you, preheat your oven at 350. There's a couple ways that you can cook this. I do the 350 me method. I'm going to cook this until it reaches an internal temperature of about 130 degrees. I usually stop at about 5 degrees before that because as it sits, it's going to rise about 10 to 15 degrees. The other way you can cook this, which I'm not going to do, but you can experiment yourself, is um, for every pound of your roast, multiply it um, by 5 minutes. So if you got a 10-pound roast, multiply it by 5 
that is going to be what you're going to cook it on for 500 degrees. And we're not going to get into that, but you can look it up on YouTube. It's another method of cooking a standing rib roast. So now to get on with what I'm doing here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to salt this, this fat cap really good. And I'm just going to simply rub it in a little bit here. A lot of it's going to fall off. That's why I didn't use the pink Himalayan sea salt. Okay, guys? And just for consistency, I'm going to salt the underside too as well. I don't know who it was that I heard say this, but on a standing rib roast, if you think you salted it, use twice as much as you think you're going to use. I don't know who that was, but I heard it some uh, from some professional chef. All right, guys, I'm not going to do the sides, but I'm doing all the rest of this. I'm going to continue to do the top here just a little bit more. You think this is a lot of salt, but there's a lot of fat here for it to get through. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of pepper. All right, and I'm going to just rub that in a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning salt. This is just on the fat cap because a lot of this is going to be wasted. And if you guys are like me, your spices cost a lot of money. So wasting is not something I want to do. All right, so as you can see there, the next thing we're going to do, excuse me one second, I'm going to get another utensil here. All right, so I, I went over and got a brush because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add my butter concoction here. Simply putting it on and I'm just going to rub, just, just go ahead and put it on pretty thick. So, this takes a little bit of time, so you got to um, be, be patient with it. All right, add a little bit more here. Everybody said everything goes better with bacon. I believe everything goes better with butter. All right, make sure we get all of it over here. All right, guys, so I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to do the fat cap, or the top of it. I'm going to get a little, my hands a little dirty here. Continue spreading it out until it's all over the meat. All right, now I'm going to do the most important part is the ends. Can't forget the ends. Make sure they're good and covered here. And we're going to flip it over on the other end. So you can see it's fully covered here. And if you can forgive me for just a moment, I'm going to go over and wash my hands off. And I'll be right back in just a moment, okay? As you can see, I've got the whole thing covered. I'm going to do another layer of seasoning here. So I'm going to add my seasoning salt here. And I'm not going to flip it over or anything. I'm just going to add this to the top. And I'm going to add my black pepper. All right, guys, so that's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to season it. Now, keep in mind, you can season yours any way you want to, any way you feel fit. There's no rules. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna grab my thermometer. I've got a little digital thermometer and I've got it set for 30, uh, 130 degrees. Let me turn the, um, the alarm on so I can hear it. There we go. So it's got a little alarm on it. I'll check it anyway. But uh, there it is. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the probe in. And I'm going to insert this into probably the thickest part of the meat. I'm doing the meat, not in the fat either. So I've got it in there. I leave this on my oven here. All right, so it's starting to read the temperature already. I can see it going up and down based on the coolness or the heat. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop it in the 350 oven. I'm going to watch my temperature. And there you have it, guys. Next time you see me, you're going to see a, a standing rib roast. Okay, guys? All right, I'll be back. All right, BFM, so here we go. I've taken it out. It's been cooking for about, eh, I would give it about two and a half hours, maybe two hours. Um, brought it up to the temperature of 130. As you can see, it's a perfect, perfect, I mean, this is absolutely perfect medium, eh, probably about a medium rare. But in any case, as you can see, the, the garlic falling off. And as you get closer to the center, it's going to become a little bit more pinker. On the outside, it's going to be a little, little bit more done. But in any case, hey, you guys, this is the perfect prime rib. All right, guys, this is Big Tone. If you guys like this video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to it. And also share the video. Hey, guys, this is Big Tone signing off. Peace.